Welcome to another Dan Educational Series episode on ears and diving. Dan spends a lot of time educating divers on ears and ear safety and diving and there's a good reason for that. In fact, ear problems, specifically middle ear problems, are the most common complaints and injuries and hotline calls that we receive because middle ear barotrauma is very common and that's what we want to unpack a little bit by trying to give you some tips that will assist you in equalizing and preventing middle ear barotrauma. There are other things that affect the ear, of course, like out ear infections and bony outgrowths and even decompression sickness that we may discuss, but we really want to drill into you managing your middle ear and specifically the Eustachian tube. Now this Eustachian tube is fascinating. It's a tube that's at the back of the throat and joins literally the middle ear to the outside world. Under normal conditions it's partially collapsed. But when we swallow or yawn or chew, this opens up and allows us to continually equalize our middle ear. Believe it or not, the Eustachian tube was not designed for diving. The reason why we have it is because our middle ear continually absorbs oxygen. The middle ear is lined with cells that use oxygen. In fact, eventually potentially 20% of the gas contents of the middle ear could be absorbed by these cells. So the middle ear tends to form a vacuum all the time and every one to five minutes we actively equalize by chewing, yawning or swallowing. Now when it comes to diving we need to know that something more is required than the usual chewing, swallowing or yawning and there's some techniques that we actually teach divers that they should apply and the first one that you probably have were already taught or have experienced yourself is the so-called Valsalva technique and in this technique you pinch the nose and blow against the nostrils and you hear a clicking or popping of the ears and that means that you have literally forced air through the Eustachian tube. There's a good and a downside to this. The good is that it works and it's fairly easy to teach. The downside is that you haven't involved any of the muscles that are typically part of opening the Eustachian tube. So the key to managing your ears is really optimizing all the elements that are involved with the Eustachian tubes. It's not a, it's not a spontaneous event when you dive. It's a conscious act. And that's what we want divers to realize. So, here we go. What are the te techniques? The first technique I'd like to talk about is a technique that often helps divers that struggle to equalize using other techniques, particularly the, the Valsalva technique. The technique is called the Frenzel technique. And what is involved is that you literally, you pinch the nose, as you would with Valsalva, but you push your tongue against the soft palate. You literally say the letter H mm or K while you do that. For what it's worth, it looks like this. It's like a, a click or a hmm that you do at the back of your throat. And what that does is it moves the muscles around the Eustachian tube in a position that actually makes it easier to equalize. And in fact, is very often a technique that people who typically struggle with Valsalva find works very very well. Now we want to give you 10 tips about how to equalize. 10 things that you can do to make it easier to equalize and of course prevent equalizing difficulties or injuries related to the ears. 
The first thing that you really need to know is that you do not want to be smoking or taking too much alcohol. The reason for that is that smoking and alcohol can actually irritate the eustachian tube and make it harder to equalize. And so therefore avoiding these are very, very simple ways to make it easier to equalize and to prevent equalizing problems. The second thing is that you want to be sure that you descend feet first or fins first, I should say. The reason for that is that if you descend head first, mucosa moves in the direction of the openings of the eustachian tube, making it harder to equalize, and air is not pointing in the direction of the middle ear, which would make it easier to equalize. So you do the opposite. You go fins first. It usually also means that you descend more slowly, and the beauty of that is that it makes it easier for you to control your descent and to make it easier to equalize. And that's what you'd like to do. The good news is, when it comes to all these things uh, related to equalizing, is that the first five meters are the barrier. If you can get past five meters, it's typically much, much easier to equalize. So we're really aiming for those first five meters. The next one of the tips is to make sure that you can hear that sort of popping or clicking sound when you equalize. And you should do that even before you start your dive. In fact, tip number two is that before you start diving, you actually already start equalizing your ears now and then. And experts such as Ernie Campbell recommend that you chew gum before you go diving because it makes it easier to equalize. The next tip is that you actually equalize before you start descending. You, so you've just, duck, you've just done your uh, duck dive or you've just uh, done your backward flip into the water. You're now waiting to descend and before you start releasing uh, gas from your buoyancy compensator, you actually equalize to make sure that your eardrums are bulging outward slightly, which means that you now have a little bit of leeway before you'll have to give your first equalization attempt. Because usually you need to equalize within the first feet or first half meter, let's say. In fact, we usually recommend that divers should equalize approximately once every breath or once every foot they go down. The next step is when you descend, hold onto a descent line because a descent line allows you to control your descent. It allows you to make sure that you don't have an uncontrolled descent where your ears stay behind and you actually start developing ear barotrauma. Make sure that you keep that positive pressure in the ear. Next tip, make sure that if it hurts, you don't continue descending. What we recommend is either you ascend a couple of feet and see if you can equalize then, because sometimes that will open the eustachian tube, or you might decide to continue your dive at the depth at which you were still able to equalize, or in some cases, you'll actually have to stop the dive there and then. And those are just a couple of tips that will make it really, really much easier to equalize. And lastly, keep your mask clear of water. Because water, if it comes in contact with the mucosa, can actually irritate the mucous membranes and make it harder to equalize. So be sure to keep your mask free from water as far as possible. Okay, so that's equalizing. Let's talk about some of the other equalizing and problems related to the outer and inner ear. Firstly, I want to talk a little bit about reverse block. Usually, equalizing is an issue when you go down. However, sometimes when divers ascend to the surface, 
the Middle East starts um, essentially expanding and the area that expands the most is the tympanic membrane. If air doesn't spontaneously go down the eustachian tube, it can go so far that it actually causes pain, which is reverse block. What we then recommend is a couple of things. One of the simplest things you can do is to tilt the head so that the ear that doesn't want to equalize points upwards and you make it easier to equalize on that side. The second thing you can do is you can literally put your finger in your ear and you actually create a, a column of water that you splint against the eardrum so you're literally keeping a fixed volume of water that keeps the eardrum in a fixed position and now when you ascend the air will preferentially go down the eustachian tube so that may make it a lot easier for you to equalize and avoid reverse block and the last way is simply slowly making your way to the surface hoping that the mucus plug will be dislodged okay also maybe just a tip I should add at this point make sure that you don't use decongestants or depend on them because they may wear off while you're diving and then you develop problems like reverse block on the way up I briefly want to talk about vertigo and tinnitus now vertigo sometimes affects divers on their way back to the surface and what happens usually between five three meters around there they have a spell of vertigo which is the result of pressure on the one side of the ear being different to that of the other side of the ear it's called alternobaric vertigo because of that pressure difference as soon as the difference in pressure abates the vertigo abates as well and it usually does so within 10 minutes so vertigo that lasts longer than 10 minutes we do not simply dismiss as alternobaric vertigo while you have the vertigo or alternobaric vertigo make sure that you hold on to your buddy or hold on to the shot line so that you don't inadvertently ascend or descend right next thing we want to say is also are vulnerable to um, the cold and the external ear particularly if we are exposed to water at about 15 degrees centigrade will eventually or may eventually actually form bony outgrowths called uh, exostoses or osteomata now the name isn't important and fortunately the bony outgrowths usually aren't a problem either however if they ultimately grow significantly large they can trap wax or dirt in the ear to the point where divers may actually struggle hearing in that case they may be referred to an ENT surgeon who may remove them but usually these are simply some things, uh, something to be aware of uh, and we don't necessarily need to do anything about it. Tinnitus, ringing in the ears. Sometimes after a dive, divers may notice ringing in the ears. Usually that is not a sinister sign, but if there is significant ringing in the ears, particularly if it continues, then it should prompt you to seek medical attention and the same is true for vertigo that lasts more than about 10 minutes okay so what else can we tell you about ears and diving well the most important thing is that you should look after your ears your ears are precious and forcing your ears uh, would be a way in which you can actually damage your inner ear and that may be permanent and so therefore we don't want you to ever force your ears in order to dive rather sit the dive out and dive another day than suffer the consequences of inner ear barotrauma and loss of hearing or vertigo believe it or not you can also develop decompression sickness or decompression illness of the ears Divers, particularly technical divers and divers who dive on helium, can actually suffer from 
the decompression illness of their inner ear. It's very rare and it's urgent that they get recompression very, very quickly. We want to make a distinction between barotrauma of the inner ear and decompression sickness. But if it is decompression sickness, the bottom line is medical assessment is very important and recompression should be undertaken as soon as possible. Let's quickly talk about diving with barotrauma. Now, if you've suffered an ear squeeze and you now need to decide whether or not you're going to try continuing your dives, well, what I need to tell you then is three things. One is there shouldn't be hearing impairment, there shouldn't be dizziness or vertigo, and most importantly, you should be able to equalize easily. If you are able to do that, then you should be able to continue diving. It's always best to get medical advice or medical attention, but that may not necessarily be available where you are. So very importantly, make sure that you are able to equalize before you go diving. It doesn't get easier in the water, so if you can't equalize on land, on shore, or on the boat you're on, don't try it in the water for the first time. Make sure that you're able to equalize. And if bubbles go through the eardrum, it means you've ruptured your tympanic membrane and you're going to need medical attention. Lastly, just a tip in terms of vertigo. If you do suffer vertigo, for whatever reason it may happen, whether that's alternobaric vertigo or some other reason, even stimulation by heat or cold uh, vertigo may result, the way in which you may find your way to the surface is by looking at the fluid, the water that usually collects in the mask, there's usually a little bit of fluid in the mask, or you can see the direction in which your bubbles are going because they go in the direction of the surface, which is where you should be heading. And that's all we have for you in terms of ears and diving as far as this particular episode of education or our Dan Education Series is concerned. We'd like you to follow us, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, join this channel. And make sure that you don't miss out on the next episode of Dan's education series on safety and diving.